treat patients with neuroptimi. So he'll share uh, uh, his uh, experience with us and tell us why treating the root cause of dry eye is so important. Good morning, everybody. I'm on the last leg before morning tea. So uh, I want to share with you today some of the key findings that made me decide that IPL was the way to move forward in my dry practice. I think often what gives you confidence is understanding the fundamentals. And for me, it goes back seven years. This guy was the Prime Minister, and the world knew what a DT was after he left office. Who heard of what DTs were? It's an Australian term, but everyone in the world knew I saw Tony Abbott wearing his DTs on the beach at Bondi. But for me, rather than look at Tony Abbott on the beach of Bondi, I invested in my first IPL machine, which was the EI device from France Medical. And for me, it's been a seven year journey of IPL, not just the technology's changed, my machines have changed, my protocols have changed, and even my patient demographic has changed. So what I want to share with you is where it all started for me. And in a way, it was a pretty bold move when I look back on it because I invested quite heavily in that first machine based on a single study. This was a study that sort of said to me, this has actually got something behind this. And this was done by the EI machine. There was only 28 patients. There was no expression done. It was at Auckland University on students. But the data looked good. I was like, wow, eight out of 10 people were happy. That's pretty exciting. And I thought, look at that tear film. It went from five seconds tear film break up to over 14. So to me, this was enough for me to go, you know what, I want to invest, I want to learn more about IPL and start to get results similar to this. And thankfully, over time, you know, you still, I'll get that sort of post buyer's remorse for you buy something and go, oh, I shouldn't have bought that for $400 because now it's 200 right? For me, it was nice. I didn't get that post buyer's remorse because the research just kept going and it kept going. And to me, that was great. You know, buying one of the first machines in Australia, you often like to see that the research supports you over time. And it did. And more and more studies came out. And to me, the Jews too was a great sort of final, I suppose, cherry on the cake. Because it's like, this was across an international group of experts reviewing almost 1,800 papers and said, look, if you're doing a step approach to dry eye, at level two, so step two, you should be considering IPL. So I'm thinking, this is a really well-founded technology and a well-founded science. So for me then, it was like, let's just let's, let's upgrade. Okay, and in 2018, I moved my EI to the side and in came my M22. And for a while I actually owned both, which was like really, really cool to have two machines there and people would come in and go, oh, you got a new machine. Oh, is that your old one over there? And like they were quite fascinated that I'd actually invested again um, and improved and updated my technology. You know, but it's a big choice because I invested quite heavily in 2015 and then only three years later I was investing again. I was thinking, well, I can sort of do this all day or I could buy one of these. Right? Admittedly, that's an unoptioned, right? Because right? you start adding options like cup holders, $200, metallic paint, $2,500, uh, front windshield, $6,000. Um, you know, there's that's a base model Porsche Cayenne. But still, you know, you're investing a large sum of money, you know? And so I was making a big commitment. And so from my point of view, I was like, I'm doing this for a number of reasons. I'm going to share with you today some really key papers that I think continually motivate me to suggest this to my patients and have driven me to, to invest in IPL over the years. And I'm now on my third IPL device, right? So I've continued to upgrade and continue to invest. And for me, the fundamentals were like a lot of the earlier treatments focused on just symptoms, right? That's what eye drops do. They help to manage a symptom. They don't treat anything. A lot of our other early treatments also focused on symptoms. But unless patients kept doing the treatments, you know, this would just keep coming back and haunting them. So the idea that RPL worked on that root cause of the inflammation of dry disease and fixed the core problem really intrigued me. Okay, and that's what sort of focused and motivated me to start investing more heavily in this technology. You know, and as Rolando sort of touched on beautifully, is that it's the inflammatory aspect which I think has been under, I suppose, discussed in many respects. We're always told about dry, gritty eyes, you know, a symptom. We're told about, oh, you know, these patients are gonna have fluctuating vision. You know, all important things, but you know, throwing eye drops at it or some baby shampoo was never getting to that root cause of the problem. And I was on my earlier lectures, I was using quite a lot of steroid initially. Because people would come to me and they've dabbled in their hot compresses and they've tried different wipes and they were still miserable. I look at their eye and go, well, their lashes look pretty clean and you know, they've, you know, they've worn out their heat pack. And I'd introduce a steroid and all of a sudden, 
I was like this rock star. They're like, what were those drops? Like, you know, can we buy them in bulk? Because our eyes finally feel better after two years of hot compresses, lid scrubbing, you know? So I was like, this is something that's only to jump on this. You know, inflammation is a massive part of it. If you ignore it, you could be the best Blevestein person in the world with the most delicate expression. But the chances are, if you don't look at that inflammation and don't manage it actively, they'll never quite get across the line. And so often that's all I've, I've done for a referred patient is to discuss the role of inflammation, introduce steroids, and then ultimately a course of IPL, which has taken them from being unhappy to happy. It's not overlooking how important inflammation is and being aware of it. So Rolero's touched on this study. I want to sort of break it down because I think if you guys really understand this, this science, it gives you that confidence. So if you look at this study, as Rolando said, it was only done with three treatments, okay, four weeks apart. So it wasn't done over years. It was just three IPL treatments. They put a shield in, did the top lid and the lower lid. And to point it out, like, this is actually, sorry, wrong button. So this is a reduction, right? This is a negative scale here, right? So here's after the four weeks, Right, your control wasn't statistically different. You can see an increase in the reduction of the interleukin 17 that Lando talked about. You saw a reduction from week four to week 12 of interleukin 6. Right, so this is actually measuring those inflammatory markers on the ocular surface. And from just three IPL treatments, just three, four weeks apart, you're reducing those inflammatory meters on the ocular surface. Right, this is what I discussed with patients saying, well, look, I know you love your FML drops, Right? But we can do this at the cause, at the root cause. We can actually work on reducing the inflammation actually coming out of your own gland. I said, you, your own glands are self-perpetuating your dry disease. Every time you blink, out comes that cloudy myobam, the bacterial endotoxins. Out comes myobam laden with inflammatory mediators. This is like self-perpetuating. So understanding this research is so important to move forward. This would have to be my single most quoted study in my practice. Right? Because you know, people come in and they say, well, look, I've seen two or three doctors before. This is an amazing paper, so I'll break it down. So 35 patients, and half of them went that traditional avenue, which we've all heard a lot about. They did their once-a-day eyelid hygiene, they did their hot compresses with massaging, right? And they soldiered on for three months. Like, what legends? They should have got champagne in the post after each month for motivation, because like, that's pretty impressive. For three months, they just soldiered on. The other group, right, were out sipping lattes and going to the beach to hang out with Tony Abbott, and all they did was have an IPL once a month, right? Three IPL treatments over three months versus homework every day for three months, okay? And at that three months review, and here's where they often can get confused, both groups improved. Both groups had a better OSDI. Both groups had less signs and less symptoms. But the difference is when you dig a little bit deeper, okay? The group, they did all the traditional treatments, even though they had improved signs and symptoms at three months, their glands at a confocal microscope level looked exactly the same. There was no change in the number of inflammatory mediators. There was no change in the appearance of the gland. Whereas in the IPL group, you can see here, this is abnormal. These acini in the gland are swollen, okay? And, in, and, and they count the inflammatory cells around the glands. After the three IPL treatments, you can see how all of those glands are less inflamed and the acini diameter has reduced. This to me, if I'm ever not sure why I spent that money on IPL machine, this reminds me why. This is the difference. You will make them feel better with hot compressors and lid hygiene, but because the gland fundamentally doesn't change, you'll find if they stop that treatment, it'll come back, right? And they're on it forever. Whereas with IPL, you're making a change to that root cause of the problem. You actually change the way the gland appears. And this to me is a massive moment. I discuss this with my patients all the time when they come in going, you know, I've got this far, but as soon as I stop my hot compressors or I stop my lubricants, everything comes back. Right? And that's what they decide to invest. They go, look, you know what, I can help you with that, but you've got to come in and see me for these treatments. We'll probably do anywhere up to eight or even more. They're going to cost you money, but I'm going to fix the root cause of the problem. Right? And that means that whole sort of discussion of fees and costs, it's out the window because you've created value, right? And it's that value that's the most important thing for me, you know? And for a lot of people too, it's just the, the I suppose you say, look, you know what? You can hang up your hot compress and your, and your lid scrubs. They're like, really? Can I hang them up? I said, hang them up. Here's my bin, put it in the bin. 
You know, sometimes people, you know, get their drops out of their bag and like empty it in my waist bin, or their drops on the scum. This is a good day, right? So these are things that give you confidence. You know, when you when you're recommending IPL to your patients, think back to this research that gives you that confidence to know that you're actually recommending things based on really good science. This was another group that showed that change in morphology. So you can see here in a 24-year-old, as Rolando was saying, the change in the gland appearance over time. A 76-year-old, you can look at the difference here, how these glands are quite congested, they're, in, they're inflamed, they're, they're stenosed at that terminal end, and how it changes over a course of IPL. And if you didn't believe that, here's my own patient. This lady had a very long journey. She's my, my rock star of IPL. I think I've now done 38 IPLs on her over seven years, right? And so you don't give up with these patients, right? You stay on top of it. And even halfway through, I said to her, I said, do you still like me? She's like, why? I said, well, I'm really concerned. You know, we're up to IPL number 22. You know, we, we catch up a lot. I'm sure your husband's asking questions. You know, <laughs> you bought my first Porsche for me. Thank you very much. But do you want to keep going? And she's like, Jason, absolutely. She goes, I was miserable. And I come in here, and yes, it takes up my time, and yes, it costs me money, but I'm back to living a normal life again. You know, but I actually asked the question, I even started to doubt myself, going, I've done 22 IPLs, right? You know, is there a point? And like, she has come so far, I'll share her case talk with you later on, but she's an example of someone who was a 29-year-old accountant who came in who was just absolutely miserable. So you can see on my own dart here, look at the difference in her glands. Look at this here. Shorts to nose, significant dropouts. This is a 29 year old. And look at the difference. Look at the length of these glands. They're longer, they're straighter. Right? As I said, we're getting to that root cause of MGD. Rather than just trying to clean up what's there, let's actually make it better. Let's improve what's there. So to me, it's just fascinating to see this on your own machine with your own patient. It actually makes a difference. So we touched on Demodex. And like, this is obviously a big part of you know, managing dry eye because often there's that concurrent anterior blepharitis. You know, and for a lot of patients, there's Demodex, particularly if they're older. So this little study looked at basically extracting a, a single hair follicle with a little active mite on it, putting it onto a glass plate, giving it a single zap uh, with the M22, um, and then watching it. And these scientists sat there with a the microscope, and they watched this little mite, and they watched it, and they watched it. You know, as you saw from Lando's video, the little feet got these little sort of circles like this, right? And they watched them, and they saw that the little feet stopped moving. And then it started to, to actually atrophy. And have a look at this, right? You can see the change, look at this. Little active feet, and then not so active feet, right? And they sat there and kept watching them for up to 24 hours, just, just checking, uh, yep, still not moving, still not moving, right? So you can see here that the actual mite was obliterated, and up to 24 hours, there was still no change or movement. So it's you know, a fantastic secondary benefit when you've got this you know, infestation. You know, if you use tea tree oil foams, They'll say you have to do it twice a day for at least six weeks. Right? A single shot of IPL, that's like Demodex, right, done, move on. Okay, so another fantastic way to get to that root cause of, you know, a, certainly a contributing factor to dry eye is lid hygiene and Demodex itself are involved in many people's uh, cases. Another one of Rolando's studies I think is a, is a fascinating study, and I think, you know, my patient alludes to this. People often say to me, oh, I've done three treatments, Jason, it's not working. Right. I know that for a while we'll touted that this was a three treatment machine, and that's all you need. I would say to you, that is not what you should be quoting to your patients. All right, we've learned, we've evolved, Rolanda's involved. Use this research. So I said to him, well look, you know, I could do three treatments, you know, and about six and a half out of 10 of you are gonna be happy. I said, but I can do more treatments. And what I say is, if I do five treatments, nine out of 10 of you are gonna be happy. Right? And I'm going to see a change as well. So don't quote three, quote five, right? And five is the beginning. What this paper went on to look at is that if you follow them over time, up to 30 months of following, you are going to need maintenance treatments. And every person's different. Some people I see every three months for a top up, some I see every six months for a top up. One Gold Coast lady, I think I did eight on her, and I didn't see her for three years. And she was like, oh, I'm glad you're still here and haven't died from COVID, fantastic. <laughs> Can I have a top up, please? I'm like, really? You've been fine? She goes, yep, I've been absolutely fine. And I just noticed the day it started to drop off. So I didn't see it for three years. So everyone's different. So I bespoke my approach. As Orlando says, look at the Mivum. The Mivum tells everything. It'll often tell you how you're going. You know? And so, but don't, when you start out, 
don't say I'll, I'll fiction three or fiction five. I tend to say it'll take between four to eight treatments. Right? If you're not sure about that patient in that chair, give yourself some breathing room. Right? It's way better to under-promise than over-deliver. Right? If you get to five treatments and the myelin's clear, you're a rock star, fantastic. You know, and if at eight it's still not, that's okay. Because right? I say to people, at eight treatments, nine out of 10 of you should be better. Right? You've got to kick that one up your sleeve. Right? We've all had those patients, you need a few more. I've got a lot that will need 12. Right? And you'll find as your practice becomes more I suppose indebted to dry patients and you get the harder and harder referrals, you know, 12 becomes your new norm, not eight. And that's okay because guess what? It still works, you just need 12 and not eight. Right, so back yourself, back the signs, don't try and get that quick fix. is not about a quick fix, but it does get to the root cause of the problem. All right, so we all know that it improves breakup time. Right, that's been well and truly shown, but I loved this paper because it also looked at the quality of the oil. And to use some background, I work with a refractive surgeon in Brisbane, right? and he loves getting things spot on, hence why he's a refractive surgeon, not a VR guy, because they get close, but they always hit the nail on the head. Right? He's a refractive surgeon, right? he wants it spot on. And to put this guy into context, right? globally in the world, trifocal eye wells are implanted about 8% of the time in cataract surgery. In our clinic, we use 80% of our eye wells of trifocal or multifocal, 80%. So you would think he would be actually in an asylum by now or you know, you know, drinking heavily at night because doing that many multifocals, most doctors would say you are nuts. But the reason we do it and the reason we're successful is we respect the tear film. And a lot of people have to earn their multifocal stripes, so to speak, before we'll actually operate on them. So they'll come in to see him and they'll be like, they'll have about the, the Porsche key ring and the gold Amex, actually no stuff that, the platinum Amex sitting there, right? And the Gucci handbag and they're like, fix my eyes, I hate glasses, give me one of these things. And he'll look at their eyes and goes, no, your eyes are too dry, I won't do it. And they get quite angry at him initially. They're like, no, but I was told to come and say, you're the best, I want to get rid of my glasses. And he'll go, no, your eyes aren't right. And they will see me and I will treat and I will treat and I will treat until the myelin is clear. Then I go back to the surgeon who does a second measure and does the eye wells. Right, so you have to respect it. And we've learned the hard way because initially we'd go, no, that looks all right those tears look adequate, and then after the multifocal goes in, it's a world of pain, right? Because then we know the cataract surgery inflames my bone and glands. Then it's a long road to nurture these people back because they've already had their operation and they're dry and then are happy and their vision's cloudy. So look at this study here. Look at the difference, right? So at baseline, there's this really sort of crystal or turbid myobum, right? Almost 90%, which was correlating pretty nicely with the poor breakup time. But following the IPL treatments, okay, it changed to much more of a pearl-like, right? That's what you want. Because you add any degree of additional scatter in the tear film to the diffractive optics of an intraocular lens, right? Their performance goes way down, way down, okay? So you cannot afford to not respect the tear film when you're putting in a, a diffractive intraocular lens. So for me, you know, this study shows once again, we're not just making more myobum, we're improving the quality of the myobum, which from a vision point of view is just so important. So I hope that's giving you some background as to why I stand here today and why I said I'm on my third IPL device and I still enjoy treating dry eye and I find it fascinating. And I think if you can arm yourself with the science, it makes your recommendations so much more powerful. You sleep well at night and I think, you know, anything else that you can do with dry eye won't achieve the same long-term results as what you can achieve with IPL. Thanks very much. Hey, thanks so much, and don't go away. Come back. We've got a panel discussion. And I also invite doctors uh, to us and Plowman to join us. Now's your opportunity to ask some questions. Come take a seat.